guys, welcome to John Nevin's Fishing Adventures, I'm Evan Bia as usual. And if you can tell from the intro of this video, we are going to be showing you guys some footage of me and my dad going catfishing with worms for some little stock catfish. It was a really great day. I think we caught like 11 catfish in just like in the morning. And so it was a really great day. And we're going to show you how we were catching them and some awesome footage. So let's get into the first fish. Yeah. Oh, look at that. What is it? That rod's going under and that has worm on it. That has worm on it. I think that's probably a bluegill. That's a bluegill bite right there. And this has worm on it, so it can't pull it under. Got him. First fish of the day on worm. Not sure what it is. It's pulling hard, but it might be a bluegill or it might be a catfish. I'm not sure. What do you th it's not like, it's not racing. Oh, it's a turtle. It's a turtle. First turtle at Falls Park. Oh no, we've got a turtle. He didn't swallow it, so that's good. At least we caught it in time. No wonder it wasn't pulling really hard. It was just a little guy. Oh my gosh, what kind of turtle is this? Because I'm not a, uh, I'm not a uh, reptilian expert, but got a little turtle here. What kind is this? Okay, so you just saw me catch a turtle. And the catfish will be coming later in the video. But before we get into the catfish, I just want to show you guys what we're using for tackle. We're using two kinds of reels, spin cast and spinning. Um, I'll talk about one of the rod and reel combos that we're using later in this little section. But the line, we're just using six, eight pound line, six pound, eight pound line, with some pear-shaped weighted floats, some weights underneath them, a small hook, and a worm. This would catch a lot of fish out there, some bass, catfish, bluegills, pretty much what we were going for for that day. But, the other rig was a slip sinker rig, just a small egg weight, swivel, hook link, which is just a short, short piece of line, small hook, and worm on the bottom. Um, now, the floats did get some hits, but I found that the um, slip sinker rigs worked the best that day, with just a red worm on it. Um, and now back to the rods and reels. The main rod that we were using that day, we did use some other ones, but the main rod was the Crystal River Rod. And I've pointed this rod out in a lot of our other videos, but let me tell you guys, this rod is incredible. It's ultra light, and it's a fly rod. So you get a fly reel and a spinning reel, all in one package. It converts from a fly rod to a spinning reel, spinning reel to fly rod. You get the idea. So you have a spinning reel and a fly reel, in one, so fly setup and spinning setup, and it's ultralight, so it makes these small catfish feel like giants. So if you like catching fish that are about this size that we're catching in the video, highly recommend getting the Crystal River Rod. It's only about thirty dollars on Amazon. I'll link an Amazon link in the description so you can buy it yourself. It's a great holiday gift. But anyway, let's get back into the video where we actually catch our first catfish of the day. Oh. Something's moving with this line. No, something's moving this line, and I don't see the float. Oh, it's a nice fish. It might be a panfish. It's tugging. First fish of the day. Oh, oh it's tugging like a catfish. I hope it's not a turtle. A uh, worm under a float. Okay, the float. Oh no, it's not turtleish. It's tugging. That thing's tugging. Oh, look at that. that that's a catfish. Oh, oh, yes, yeah. First fish of the day. Nice little channel. Oh, it's snagged. It's a sna I think, yeah, it's a snagged fish. But he went for it. A little baby. Get the net. Over six pounds. Yeah. Let's pull him out. Little baby catfish. On oh, a worm. He went for it, but I think he, he got... No, I can do it. We'll set him on the ground so I can grab him. So, there we go, there he goes, there, there he is, there he is, there he is. He's squeaking. He's squeaking. These little guys are fairly dangerous when it comes to their spines, so you gotta be careful. There's one of the spines right there, so I wanna let the guy relax. 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 There you go. No, hey. Gotta get him behind the spine, like so. That's where you grab them. I got you. I got you. Can't spine me. He's squeaking. I got him. 
he's on he's unhooked. Nice little half pound catfish. There he goes. Yeah, and he swim. A uh, worm, yeah. Bottom or um, on a float, but it's near the bottom. And that was like immediate. Like, and I, I literally just casted that float out like a couple minutes ago. Okay, so you just saw me catch the first catfish of the day. I know they aren't big catfish, but we are nailing them. Probably caught 11, 12 catfish that day. Um, but while we're watching the catfish being reeled in, I just want to show you guys some worm tips because worms are a great bait for all sorts of fish tons of people use them but i just want to tell you guys some little secret tricks that you can use to make worms work even better first tip use red worms night crawlers work but i find that red worms work a lot better for lots more species because they're much thinner and it's easier for the fish to get them in your mouth that's at least good for bluegills if you're going for catfish, I would suggest night crawlers, which was what we were using in the video. But if you're going for panfish, catfish, bass, pretty much anything, I would go with red worms. But since we were mostly targeting catfish in the video, we chose night crawlers. Second trick, put some moss in with your worms. If you have lots of worms left from a trip and you want to save them because you might be going fishing really soon, put some moss in with the worms. It makes them last a ton longer. We've had Worm boxes last for like two weeks and they're still alive. Sometimes even more lively than when we got them. You just pluck some moss, moss off the tree, put it in there, shut it, and put it in a place where the where, um, animals won't get to it. And you will have worms for a long time. And it really does work. Um, third trick is cut a little bit of the worm off. I in this video used half worms rather than whole worms because when you cut the worm even if you cut a little smidgen off of it what happens is is all the scent that's inside the worm flows out of it and attracts more fish if it's got only the holes from the hook in it it won't release as much scent but if you just cut off a little bit of it or cut it in half you'll have a lot more scent and it really does work at least that's what i think and in theory it does and fourth trick, make sure you don't have a long tag in sticking off, because this is a great way for bluegills to steer, steal your bait extremely quickly. So make sure you kind of ball it up on there, onto the small hook, so that way the bluegills won't steal it. Um, so that's pretty much it for worm tricks. Let's, I want to let you guys see the next catfish. Okay, I'm going to pull in this rod, because this rod hasn't had zero activity. Let's see what this thing's up to. Oh, look at that. It's probably the wind, though. It's connected to it. Okay, there we go. And... Do have a bite? <laughs> oh, man. We got a fish on! Fish on! On the spin cast! Didn't know it was even on! It's a catfish. Second catfish all of the day on the spin cast. Didn't swallow it either. Perfect. Worm. Ne right next to the lighthouse. Told you. Honest, just a slip sinker rig. Oh, he swallowed it. He kind of swallowed it. Little baby. Can you help me with this guy? Kind of swallowed it. Okay, so you're probably wondering, how are we finding so many catfish? Usually, when we go to this place, we only catch a couple catfish a day. And so I want to show you how to find catfish in small ponds, because it can be really tricky. And this place isn't very deep. It's only maybe two or three feet deep from what my marker float says. And we'll make a marker float and depth finding video in the future. But it's only two, three deep, and it's fairly flat. It's not like has tons of contours. So where do you find fish? Well, we want... Anyway, um, back to the video. Where was I? Uh, oh yeah, how to find fish. Since it's fairly flat, the catfish are going to be all over the place. So when you're looking for catfish, especially during the daytime, which, which is when we go catfishing, you want to move your baits around a lot. If you're not finding fish within an area for maybe 10-20 minutes, move the rods, okay? So if you have three rods out, you're not getting anything in those positions, cast them in a different place. 
because catfish aren't very active during the day. They're just going to sit there and wait for food to come by. They're very lazy. So if you're not getting fish there, then that means that you're, there are no catfish around and you need to move the bait to where the catfish are. And if you're starting to catch catfish, but then they start to drop off, then you're going to need to move your baits again. So that's what we were kind of doing that day. But we eventually found where they all were, and that was at the lighthouse. It's a vertical structure, and I think that's where there maybe were some drop-offs or some rocks from the uh, structure, and the catfish just loved it. Um, and so that was the main feature in that lake, where there was depth and structure, because that's what catfish like. They also like depth and structure. And so that lighthouse was perfect for those little baby catfish. So let's get back to the video. This rod's tensing up. That rod's tensing up, and there's a float on here. See, that's rods moving out. There's a fish on this one. There's a nice fish on here. Here. Just cut the line on that one. I can always pull it, get it off. I want you to land this fish. Oh, it's already coming up. And this is another catfish. The catfish are on fire today. Oh, was this minnow? This was minnow, right? Yeah. Here, I'll take him from here. You're going to have to just cut it. Just cut it? Okay. Just set him on the ground. Reel this nice fish in. Just cut the line real quick and release him. Oh, it's another cat. Another cat. I know. I know. I am. There he goes, he's swimming off. Here you go. There's your rod. Yo. This one's my dad's. Nice fish. Woo! That's a nice fish. Right in the corner. That's probably that's probably one of the bigger ones. Bigger than the last the other one I got. So the, the catfish are on fire today. We've already caught three catfish. That's incredible. And for our last and final tip of the day is keeping your rods from flying in the water. Yes, we've had some bad incidences with rods flying in waters in the past. Um, in a more previous video, which I posted before and I'll link it in the cards and at the end of the video, what happened was is we had the rod on the tendon and a two pound catfish yanked the rod out of the rod holder. It was about to fly in the water. And so my dad grabbed it just in time. And so now we've kind of learned our lesson. And so you really want to make sure that you secure your rods thoroughly. Because otherwise, even a small catfish, a two-pound catfish, can drag a good-sized rod like the Crystal River rod in the water. So how do you stop that from happening? Well, as you see in the video, we were leaning our rods up against this rail to keep people from falling in the water and drowning. Well, that's actually really good because as long as you have a small bit of the rod sticking up, it's like going to be impossible for a, you know, catfish to pull it out. If the rod is like this, oh my gosh, it's going to be really easy for it to drag in the water. But if it's just about this much, they might lift it a little bit or bend it, but they're not going to move it anywhere. Uh, but that doesn't mean that, oh, I can just lean my rod up against something and it's not going to move. Just don't do that. Either A, keep the bail open so line can't be taut, so the line can't be taut, and the rod can go in. Just keep the bail open, maybe the back wind on. Just set something so where line can come out, yet you still have a bite indicator. I learned this really cool trick where if you stand your reel and rod up so that way the spool isn't touching the ground, what you can do is, is you can drape your line over a, a water bottle that has a thin bit of water in it, and what happens is, is when the line goes tight, it knocks over the water bottle because of the tension, because it's parallel to the spool. But what happens is, is when the water bottle gets knocked over, it releases from the water bottle, and the line starts spooling out. I want to show that in another video, and I will also link it somewhere on the screen and in the... And, and I will link it in the cars and at the end of the video. So that's just kind of a little bit of tips on keeping your rods from flying in the water, and you really don't want that to happen. But 
that's pretty much all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoy. Hope you like watching the rest of these catfish being railed in. And see you next time. We're not crossing. Already! I literally just casted that line out. Um, bottom rig. Ooh, it's, pulling, it's peeling drag. It's not a little baby. They're stocking on that lighthouse. It's another channel. He's got that one. He's running with it. Not anymore. Yeah, he's got, he's got, got him! Fish on! Fish on! On the ready to fish! Oh. Uh, I saw that. Oh, the catfish. Little, little baby. But it's a fish. It's kind of. I think you might be able to get that guy out. A little baby, but it's a fish. Swallowed it. Yeah. Here, I'll let it. I'll let out some line for you. What happens is they have like really soft stomachs. Yeah. Oh, look at this! Look at this! 